Congratulations on the purchase of your new marquee by Beaver Motor Coach. In order to protect your investment, it's important you follow these instructions carefully. I know you're anxious to learn all about your new marquee, so let's get started. One thing to keep in mind, most systems within your coach will only operate with the coach power switch turned on. If any feature like the lights or air conditioning fails to work properly, check the coach power switch make sure it's turned on. This switch is also very convenient for turning most of your house lights on or off with just one switch. Before you move your slide room out, there's a few things you need to consider. Once you've settled on a location, make sure you have at least enough clearance for the slide room and the bay doors, and if you're going to be using it, the awning as well. Always have your coach at full ride height when moving the slide room in or out. You'll need at least 110 pounds of air pressure to get the coach to full ride height. Move your seat all the way forward. Be sure the ignition key is in the off position and that the parking brake is applied. Press and hold the slide out room switch in the out position. The slide out room will now be moving out. Release the slide out switch when the room is fully extended. You'll notice a change in the sound of the motor. Now you're ready to level your coach. The leveling system uses the chassis battery for all necessary electrical functions. Make sure the battery is fully charged before starting the leveling process. To level your coach, make sure the wheels are straight. Place the transmission in neutral. Apply the parking brake. Turn the engine off. You must not move around in the coach while leveling is in process, as it will confuse the sensors. With the ignition switch in the off position, turn the power switch on the jack control panel to on. The system will go into a self-diagnostic mode. The self-diagnostic mode is indicated by the level sensor lights flashing in a circular pattern and the level light flashing. This will last approximately 20 seconds. When the diagnostic mode is completed, one or two sensor lights will be lighted to indicate the end or side of the coach that's low. If the coach is already level, only the level light will flash. Next, press the auto button on the control pad. The air will begin to release from your suspension. This will last about 90 seconds. The air dump light will illuminate to indicate this process. The system will now start to extend the jacks to the axles and begin to level. When completed, the green level light will come on. You can now turn the system off and move about in your coach. Note, if the coach is too far out of level to start with, the system will indicate this by flashing all the directional lights and the level light simultaneously. There is also a timeout indicator. Each operation has an allotted amount of time to complete a task. If the time runs out before the task is done, it will be indicated by the right and left lights along with the level light flashing simultaneously. Generally, this will indicate one or more jack cylinders are at full extension and cannot move to level the coach. To retract the levelers and return to ride height, press the retract button. All jacks will retract until fully up. The all up light coming on will indicate this. The automatic retract will only work if the system has been left on. If the system was turned off, press and hold the manual retract button until all jacks are up, as indicated by the all up light. After the jacks have retracted, air the coach up by starting the engine and letting it run. Make sure you have at least 110 pounds indicated on the air pressure gauge before moving the slide room in or before moving the coach. It takes at least 110 pounds of pressure to get the coach to ride height. If you have the optional air leveling system, there may be times when it's more convenient to use this system rather than the hydraulic system. If the surface you're parked on is soft, you won't have to place plywood pads or blocks under the hydraulic ramps. You can simply proceed to level with the air leveling system.
To level your coach, set the emergency brake and put the coach in neutral. Leave the engine running and push the air level button once to enter the air mode. The air indicator light and four airbag warning lights will glow steady. Press the air level button a second time. The air indicator light will begin flashing and air leveling will soon begin. It's essential there's no movement in the coach while leveling. When all four yellow sensing lights are out, leveling is complete. The air indicator light will stop flashing and turn steady red. The processor is now in sleep mode for 30 minutes. The engine may now be turned off. Every 30 minutes, the processor checks the coach's level condition, makes any adjustments, and then goes back to sleep mode. This will continue until the system is turned off by pushing the off button, or the emergency brake is released. Remember, the coach will level faster if the engine's running, so don't forget to set the parking brake. Push the air level button once. The air indicator light will glow steady. Individually push the raise and lower arrow. Lights will indicate that air is being added or dumped from the suspension airbags as the coach is being leveled. These are momentary buttons whose functions will stop once they're released. The yellow level lights indicate if a side, end, or corner of the coach is low. To achieve leveling, simply lower the opposite side or end of the coach. If a level cannot be achieved by dumping air, then raise the coach according to the lighted yellow leveling lights. Always give preference to any side light before leveling front to rear. When level, turn the ignition switch off, then turn the air leveling system off. You are now ready to move the slide room in. Make sure there's nothing in the way and that the floor is clean because dirt and grit can damage the floor. Press and hold the switch in the in position. The slide room will move slowly in. To stop the room before it reaches the full in position, simply release the switch. To continue the room movement, push and hold the switch in. The motor will change tone when the slide room is fully retracted, then release the switch. Remember, never move the coach when the slide room is extended and make sure you always have the coach at full ride height before driving. The batteries are a crucial part of your electrical system. The health of these batteries directly affects how well your coach performs. The Deep Cycle House batteries are designed to have the majority of their capacity discharged before being recharged. It's important they be recharged as soon as possible after being discharged. Your inverter will automatically recharge your batteries as soon as you're plugged into shore power or when you start the generator. It may take a long time to recharge depending on the depth of the discharge and how much power you're using during the recharge period. If for any reason the chassis batteries have 3 volts less charge than the house batteries, they'll have to be charged with a battery charger or by running the engine for a period of time. If there's not sufficient charge in them to start the engine, you can use the battery boost switch on the driver's side panel to boost the chassis batteries. Simply hold the switch down for a few seconds, then start the engine while still holding the switch down. Think of it as a set of booster cables in a switch. Check the fluid levels in the batteries at least once a month, or more if the batteries are being used heavily. The electrolyte level should be approximately 3 eighths of an inch below the well level to allow for expansion when the battery is being charged. If possible, it's important to have some source of power for the coach when it's being stored to keep the batteries charged. If you have a power source, plug the coach in. This will keep the batteries charged. They should still be checked once a month. If the coach is going to be stored for more than 48 hours without a power source, it's recommended that the battery disconnect switch be turned off. But beware, when you disconnect the batteries, you'll lose the many memory settings within your coach. The batteries are the heart of your coach and must be taken care of properly. If you're going to be dry camping, take care to run the generator often enough to maintain the batteries at a high state of charge to ensure good use and long battery life. The Video Control Monitor, or the VCM, allows you to monitor virtually every system on board your coach from three separate locations, both televisions and the backup monitor at the driver's console. The VCM will automatically turn on when the ignition is on, and likewise will turn off when the ignition is off. Turn the TV on. Press the Menu button. Input Select will appear at the top of the main menu. 
press the plus button. Use the down arrow and select video composite. To turn the VCM on while the ignition is on, push up on the VCM toggle switch. Use the toggle switch to navigate through the different selections available. Here are some of the functions of the VCM. Engine transmission status. This is useful not only while traveling to monitor engine and transmission functions, but also to see how warm the AquaHot system is. It would be the same as the indicated engine and transmission temperature. Electrical systems status. This includes both 120 volt input and 12 volt battery power available and how much power is being discharged. Coach tank miscellaneous status. This tells you the level of your fresh, gray, black, and liquid propane tanks. It also tells you the basement temperature as well as the outside temperature. The trip meter gives you a variety of information about trip legs, trip fuel stats, and engine totals for hours, miles, and fuel consumed. The maintenance scheduler gives you information about when you're due for various maintenance items. Modifying maintenance intervals and resetting miles to go should be done with the ignition on so the engine information is available for recording. Refer to the owner's manual for preventative maintenance schedules. The time alarm functions allows you to set alarms for most of the items just mentioned. For example, if you want to be reminded about scheduled maintenance, you can set the alarm to let you know when it's due. The idea is for the VCM to monitor various parameters continuously so you don't have to. When an alarm comes on, the VCM is reset to the main menu and the alarm activation window is displayed. This will indicate the source of the alarm. To disarm the alarm, simply move the joystick controller in any direction. System options is primarily used to select a video source, such as your backup camera. You can use this to view the backup monitor while driving. Note, each time you select reverse, the backup monitor will automatically come on, but will not remain on after you select drive, unless you reselect it in system options under select video source. The other items in system options have been preset at the factory and should be left alone. The last item, power down VCM, shuts the system off. As we said before, the batteries are the heart of your coach and they must be taken care of properly. Now, let's talk about the inverter, the brains behind the batteries. The inverter inverts 12 volt DC power or direct current power to 120 volt AC power or alternating current. This allows you to use appliances when you're either unhooked from shore power and or the generator is off, like when you're traveling. Here are some examples of how the inverter is used. When you're dry camping, that is camping without the benefits of shore power, you can turn the inverter off to conserve energy. If, however, you want to watch the big game on your home theater system and have some popcorn from the microwave, then the inverter needs to be on. One thing to note, the inverter is not set up to power your refrigerator. When unhooked from shore power, make sure you switch the refrigerator to propane to keep it cold. If you're camping with shore power, you can set the refrigerator back to 120 volt AC power. The inverter charger has limited power output. Exercise care when operating from the inverter. Remember, Operating from the inverter quickly consumes house battery power. The inverter can charge the house batteries as well as the chassis batteries when receiving AC power. To do this, the inverter must be set to charge because it will not automatically begin charging when AC power is available. Please note, if the charge in the chassis batteries and house batteries varies by more than 3 volts, as indicated on the dash panel voltage meter, it will not charge the chassis batteries. You'll need to charge the chassis batteries with a battery charger or run the engine for a while. You can put the inverter in standby mode by turning the inverter on while receiving AC power. In this mode, the inverter will automatically start supplying AC power for the coach if AC power is discontinued. However, this will start using battery powered rapidly until the AC input is regained. Here are some of the items that will operate only when plugged into shore power or while running the generator. The roof air conditioners, washer dryer, driver side nightstand 120 volt outlets, hot water tank electric element, the refrigerator and the battery charger. The following items can operate with power from the inverter. The VCR, 
satellite receiver, Sony surround system, front and rear TVs, microwave convection oven, all house lighting, and all other house 120 volt outlets. The sine wave inverter is a very comprehensive system and will do many different tasks to maintain optimum performance of your electrical system. The settings on the inverters have been preset at the factory and will maintain your electrical system at optimal levels in most cases. Note, this is not a substitute for the inverter owner's manual. The inverter is very comprehensive with many variables. Not all the programming details are covered. Throughout this video, the term AC refers to shore power and generator power. The inverter inverts 12 volt battery power, also known as DC or direct current, to 120 volt power, also known as AC or alternating current. This allows you to operate appliances when the coach is either unhooked from shore power and or the generator is off, like when you're driving. Here are some examples of how the inverter is used. When you're dry camping, that is camping without shore power, you can turn the inverter off to conserve energy. If, however, you want to watch that big game on your home theater system and have some popcorn from the microwave, then the inverter needs to be on. One thing to note, the inverter is not set up to power your refrigerator. When unhooked from shore power, make sure you switch the refrigerator to propane to keep it cold. If you're camping with shore power, you can set the refrigerator back to 120 volt AC power. The inverter charger has limited power output. Exercise care when operating from the inverter. It may be necessary to operate items in sequence, rather than everything all at once. Remember, operating from the inverter quickly consumes house battery power. The inverter can charge the house batteries as well as the chassis batteries when receiving AC power. To do this, the inverter must be turned on or set to charge because the inverter will not automatically begin charging when hooked to shore power or from the generator. You can put the inverter in the standby mode by turning the inverter on while receiving AC power. In this mode, the inverter will automatically start supplying AC power for the coach if AC power is discontinued. However, this will start using battery power rapidly until AC input is regained. If you leave the inverter in the charge mode and were to lose AC power, the inverter would stop charging but would not automatically turn on and drain the batteries. If your batteries are below 8.5 volt state of charge, the inverter will not charge the batteries when receiving AC power. They'll need to be charged on a battery charger. The sine wave inverter is a very comprehensive system and will do many different tasks to maintain the optimum performance of your electrical system. You may want to refer to the Trace Inverter Owner's Manual Supplement and follow along as we go through the systems of this inverter. The menu system is divided into a user menu and a setup menu. Each of the menu systems is divided into menu headings and menu items. The menu headings break the menu into groups of related items. At the menu item level, a setting can be adjusted, a mode can be selected, or information can be displayed. The user menu provides the controls and settings needed on a daily basis. It allows you to turn on the inverter and generator, read the AC and DC meters, check on an error cause, and even adjust the inverter clock. The setup menu provides all the settings necessary for the electrical systems to operate at their optimum. Most of these settings are made at the factory and normally do not need to be changed. They're separated from the user menu to reduce tampering and simplify the daily operation of the inverter. The menu system is accessed through the remote control panel. To enter the user menu, press the red on-off button. This will be indicated by the display reading Set Inverter. Press the red button to scroll the cursor. This is the first of eight menu headings. It is also known as the Inverter Mode 1 heading. Go to the menu headings buttons. Go through the different headings. Scroll down using the down arrow. The menu headings include generator mode, trace engineering, meters, error causes, time of day, generator timer, and end user menu. In each of these menu headings, you can move to the menu item buttons and scroll down through the menu items or subheadings using the up or down arrows. When in the menu item display, you can make settings changes by going to the set points buttons. The setup menu provides all the controls and settings needed when installing or adjusting the system. The setup menu is indicated by a number from 9 through 14. To access the setup menu, press both the red on-off menu and green gen menu buttons at the same time. 
This will take you to inverter setup number 9 on the display. This is simply the continuation of the user menu. Scroll down using the menu headings down button. You'll find the following menu headings. Battery charging, AC inputs, Gen Auto Start Setup, Gen Starting Details, and Auxiliary Relays. Again, each of these headings will have subheadings or menu items. Now that we've shown you how to navigate through the different screens and modes, we'll show you how they work. Press the red button to bring you back to the original screen. You can think of this key as a hotkey or home key. It will always bring you back to the inverter mode, no matter where you are in the menu. Repeated pressing of the red button scrolls the cursor across the screen. Off turns the inverter and charger off. The charger will not activate in this mode, even when AC is available. Search turns the inverter on when a specified load, rated in watts, is applied to the inverter. For example, the Instant On feature on your television set and VCR have a constant power draw and would probably be enough to turn on the inverter when it's in search mode. On turns the inverter on regardless of load. This also puts the inverter into standby mode while AC power is applied. When in standby mode, if AC input is discontinued to the motorhome, the inverter will automatically provide AC power to the coach by inverting power from the batteries. When AC power resumes, the inverter will automatically return to standby mode. Note, remember when storing the coach, you'll want to disable the standby mode, but leave the battery charging function on. To do this, set the cursor to charge only mode. It is always best to store your coach in the charge mode. Charge only turns the charger on when AC is available. If AC power discontinues, the charger will stop. This setting is normally only used when the coach is in storage. Note, when hooked to shore power or operating the generator, use the red button to set the inverter to either on or charge so the batteries will charge. Failure to do this will result in dead batteries. Battery charging. Whether hooked to shore power or operating from the generator, the internal battery charger in the inverter will charge the house batteries and chassis batteries. Battery charging does not begin automatically when AC power is available. The inverter must be turned on to begin battery charging. The time it takes to charge the batteries to a full state of charge varies greatly depending on the actual state of charge of the batteries and how much power is being used during charging. The inverter uses a three-stage charging cycle with battery temperature sensor. Refer to the manual for more detailed information on charging. The green button acts the same as the red button, except it always brings you back to the generator mode. An underscore of the first letter indicates the selected mode. Press the green button to scroll the cursor. Off turns off the inverter's control over any generator function. Auto enables the automatic generator start function. On overrides the automatic start program and starts the generator immediately. EQ. We do not recommend using this feature without first thoroughly studying your owner's manual or consulting your dealer. Programming and resetting. The inverter's factory default settings are of optimum values in most situations. If the programming was altered, it's easy to reset the factory default values. Keep in mind, this will reset all settings in the inverter to factory default values. Two of the settings will, however, reset to trace inverter settings and will have to be reset to Monaco settings. These settings are covered later in this video and are needed for the auto generator mode. To reset the inverter, press the menu headings down button on the remote until trace engineering heading 3 displays. Using the menu item buttons, scroll down until you see press reset now for default on the screen. Press the reset to factory default button on the remote. Move to meters mode 4 by pressing the down button on the menu headings. This button is used for displaying information on the battery and inverter. Scroll through the menu using the menu items down button to view the different meters. Note the meters do not display a plus symbol for positive values. Explanation of the meters. Inverter charger. Amps AC displays the total number of AC amps used by the internal charger when hooked to shore power or operating from the inverter. This meter also displays the AC amp load when using the inverter. Input amps AC is the total of AC amps including the internal charger and pass-through relay amps. Load Amps AC reads the current that is going to AC loads. Battery Actual Volts DC displays the DC battery voltage at the inverter. Battery Temp Comp Volts DC displays the voltage setting during battery charging. 
Inverter volts AC displays the inverter's AC output voltage. Grid AC1 is used for selling power back to the power grid and is not used in this installation. Generator AC2 volts AC displays the incoming line voltage from AC to the inverter. Read frequency displays the incoming frequency of AC power to the inverter in hertz. Mode 5 error cause. This identifies specific error causes. For example, if you have a red LED light on, the cause of the error can be found in this mode. Scroll through the menu items in this heading until you find the item that indicates yes. One of the things you're going to want to know how to do is to set the generator to start automatically when the battery power gets to a certain level of discharge. This is a very useful feature and can enhance the use of your coach and extend the life of the coach's batteries if used properly. Time of day mode 6 and generator timer mode 7 in the user menu are the primary modes used for setting the quiet times for the autogen operation. This section covers the procedures to program the automatic generator start function. There are several variables to the program. Some settings may work fine in one location, but not in another. Setting the 24-hour clock. Using the menu headings button, scroll to menu number 6, time of day. Press down on the menu items button, set clock hour will display. Use the set point buttons to set the hour. Time changes in 10-minute increments, and the clock is a 24-hour clock. For example, 9 a.m. is 0900, 3 p.m. would be 1500. 7 p.m. would be 1900. Press down on the menu items button and set clock minute will display. Use the set point buttons to set the minute. Press down on the menu items button and set clock second will display. Use the set point buttons to set the seconds. Press the menu headings down button and menu heading number 7 generator timer will display. Press down on the menu items button again and start quiet time HM will display. This feature allows you to program the generator to stop running or not start after quiet time begins. Use the set point buttons to set the hour and minute at which the generator will start quiet time. Press down on the menu items button again. End quiet time HM will display. End quiet time is the time the generator can come back on under the auto gen start parameters. Refer to the inverter manual for changes in the auto gen start parameters. Use the set points buttons to set the hour and minute that will end quiet time. Note, if desired, the quiet time may be disabled. To do this, set the start and end quiet times to the same hour and minute. The next set of instructions covers many variables to program the generator's starting or stopping events. Many different starting conditions, lengths of operation, or stopping conditions are available. If in doubt about changing any settings, the factory default settings are average settings and will work in most situations. When the battery disconnects are shut off, the inverter will revert back to the factory default settings, except for two settings that will revert back to trace engineering settings. This will require you to enter the setup menu. These settings are under menu heading Gen Starting Details. Scroll down to Set Gen Warm-Up Seconds. This needs to be set to 90 seconds, or the generator will shut down right after it starts up. Scroll down again to Set Post Crank Seconds. This one needs to be set to 90 seconds also, or again, it will shut the generator down right away. These will need to be reset to Monaco settings anytime DC power is lost to the inverter, in order for the Auto Gen Start feature to work. Warning! Use caution when programming the automatic generator start function. When this feature is enabled, the generator may start at any time. Disable this feature when performing service to the generator or when stored in an enclosed building. To disable the automatic generator start feature, press the green button and scroll to off. Press the red and green button simultaneously to continue the generator auto start programming. Heading number 9, Inverter Setup, should appear. Press the menu headings down button to scroll to headings number 12, Gen Auto Start Setup. Press the menu items down button to advance through the next set of displays. Read all the options first before setting any values of the menu items here. Press the set point buttons to change the settings of a menu item. Here are the menu items in menu heading 12, Gen Auto Start Setup. First, set load start amps AC. This starts the generator when the AC current being used in the coach exceeds the preset number of amps set in the display. 
Set load start delay minutes. This is the time delay period used with set load start amps AC menu item. Example, setting the time period to zero starts the generator immediately when the total number of amps exceeds the setting of menu item set load start amps AC. Set load stop delay min. This sets the amount of time the generator will run after the load drops below the load start amps AC setting. Set 24 hour start volts DC. This starts the generator if the voltage drops below the setting for a consecutive 24 hour period. For example, if the voltage is set for 12.5 volts DC and house battery voltage drops below 12.5 volts for a continuous 24 hour period, the generator will start. This setting is helpful when storing the motorhome. Caution, it could be several days before the generator starts from the 24 hour voltage setting. Do not use this setting when storing the motorhome inside a storage building. Do not park the motorhome near dry grass. Hot exhaust from the generator could start a fire. Set 2 hour start volts DC. Starts the generator if the voltage drops below the setting for a consecutive 2 hour period. Example, if the voltage is set for 12 volts DC and house battery voltage drops below 12 volts for a continuous 2 hour period, the generator will start. This voltage setting is usually lower than the 24 hour start voltage setting. Primarily used when dry camping. Example, light loads on house batteries over time. Voltage drops at relatively steady rates until obtaining the preset voltage for two continuous hours. Set 15 minute start volts DC has the same operating principles as the previous two menu items. This voltage setting is used when applying heavy loads to the house batteries. For example, using a lot of lights and the inverter to watch the television and operating the microwave. These types of loads rapidly deplete battery reserves. Battery voltage drops quickly when applying heavy loads to the house batteries. Read 30 second LBCO start VDC is used with the menu item set low battery cutoff VDC under menu heading number nine inverter setup. If the house battery voltage drops to this point, the inverter waits 30 seconds before starting the generator. This start setting overrides quiet time. The generator will operate until the bulk and absorption cycles are complete if the generator started from one of the low battery settings. Set exercise period days 30. This setting is for houses and is not programmed for this coach. Set maximum runtime HM. This sets the generator's maximum runtime. An error message will be displayed if the generator operates longer than the time period set. For example, if the maximum runtime is set for two hours, and the generator runs for 2 hours and 20 minutes, it will give you an error message. This is only a message. To cancel the message, return to the generator mode by pushing the green button. Use the green button to scroll to off. This will also shut the generator off. Use the menu items down button to scroll down to set gen warm-up seconds. This is the same section we spoke of a couple of minutes ago. Use the set point buttons to set the time to 90 seconds. If it is not set to 90 seconds, the generator will shut down prematurely. Use the menu items button to scroll down to set post crank seconds. Use the set point buttons to set the time to 90 seconds. If it is not set to 90 seconds, the generator will shut down prematurely. To enable or disable the auto gen start program after completing the programming schedule, use the green button to return to heading number two, generator mode. To enable the automatic generator start feature, Press the green button and scroll to auto. To disable the automatic generator start feature, press the green button and scroll to off. To exit the setup menu, press either the red or green buttons or press the up arrow menu heading button until you reach the user menu headings one through eight. Remember, this video is just a quick start guide. To learn more about this inverter, scroll through the different screens and explore what they can do. Refer to the manual for extensive details. If you're storing your coach for an extended period of time, leave the inverter in the charge mode and plug into shore power. If you have the optional solar panels, you may not have to plug into shore power if you have an adequate supply of sun and solar panels. Remember, a coach is not like a car. It has many memory functions that constantly drain battery power. If you leave your coach without power for more than three days, it may completely drain your batteries, even if nothing within the coach is being used.
Push and hold the generator on-off switch. The generator engine ignition will go into the preheat mode for 2 to 12 seconds, depending on the ambient air temperature. Listen for the generator to crank and run. The switch light will glow solid when the generator is running. Coach power will transfer to the generator in approximately 40 seconds. Generator fuel priming. If you run the main fuel tank below one quarter of a tank, the generator fuel pickup tube will not be able to supply fuel to the generator. It's designed to quit supplying fuel to the generator at about a quarter of a tank, so you won't run out of fuel at your campsite while running the generator. Should you inject air into the fuel system, make sure you fill your tank to more than one quarter full and then prime the generator by holding the start switch to the stop position. This will run the fuel pump only, bringing fresh fuel to the engine and forcing any air in the fuel system back into your main tank via the fuel return line. Be sure to shut off air conditioners and other heavy electrical loads prior to starting the generator. Prior to shutting down the generator, turn off all air conditioners and heavy electrical loads for a couple of minutes to allow the generator to cool. If you should need assistance with your generator while on the road, call 1-800-888-6626. You'll be given the phone and location of the nearest Cummins Power Generation Service Center. If your batteries have gone dead and you can't run the power cord out, pull it out a couple of inches, then push it back in. This releases the cord from the motor so it can run freely. You can then pull the cord out as necessary, turn the shore power circuit breaker off, plug in, and then turn the circuit breaker back on. Keep in mind, even a small amount of dust or dirt can keep the power cord reel from working properly. So when you're bringing the power cord in, run it through a clean rag first. Connect to cable TV if available. Plug in the phone jack. This provides a connection throughout your coach for a phone as well as your optional satellite system. When connecting the motorhome to fresh water, be sure to use a hose labeled for potable water to ensure the hose will not flavor your water. Turn on the fill switch located in the galley, then turn on the water supply. Use the video coach monitor to see when the tank is full, then turn off the fill switch and the water supply. If the fill switch is left open, the water pump will run continuously and very little water will run from any of the faucets. This will also pressurize your coach's water system when you stay connected to city water. It is not necessary to use the water pump when you're connected to city water. Make sure you bleed the air out of all the faucets. The black dump valve is for discharging solid wastes. The gray dump valve is for other liquid drainage such as sink water and shower water. Check the hose clamp to be sure it's secured tightly. With the sewer hose properly connected, open the gray dump valve to allow the system to drain. At some point before emptying the system completely, you'll want to close the gray dump valve in order to save at least half a tank with which to rinse the sewer hose. To fill the gray water tank, run water into the shower or sinks. Use the monitor panel to observe tank fluid levels. When the gray tank is half full, stop filling it. Keep the black dump valve closed until you're ready to empty the tanks. When you are ready, open the black dump valve. When the tank is empty, open the gray dump valve to rinse the lines. Flush the black and gray tanks by connecting a non-potable hose to the flush system fitting. Open both gray and black water dump valves and turn on the water supply. Let it run for at least three minutes. Turn off the faucet and close the dump valves. The comfort controls located here and in the bedroom are used for ventilation and air conditioning as well as the aqua hot furnace. The aqua hot is for heating the interior of the coach and the hot water supply. To operate the aqua hot hydronic heating system, the house batteries must be charged and the coach power switch has to be on. Turn on the aqua hot diesel burner switch. It'll take about 15 or 20 minutes for the burner to heat the water in the heat exchangers. Next. Use the mode button to select furnace on the comfort control and set the desired temperature for zone one. Turn on the heater switch located in the galley. This controls the fans in the heat exchangers. They can be set to high, low, or off. Do the same thing with the comfort control in the bedroom. 
The control in the bedroom controls the bathroom on zone 2 and the bedroom on zone 3. The aqua hot also heats your hot water. When it reaches operating temperature, you'll have hot water for showers and kitchen use. To use the air conditioner, you have to either have shore power or the generator on. The coach power switch must be on and the house batteries must be charged. Use the mode button to select cool on the comfort control and set the desired temperature. Set the fan to high, medium, or low, or auto. To use fan only, turn the fan switch on and set the fan to high or low. The controls in the bedroom are the same as the ones in the living room. The refrigerator can operate with both AC power and LP gas. To start the refrigerator when plugged into shore power, where the generator is running, press and hold the on button until the AC light comes on, or put it on auto. In auto, the LP gas will come on automatically if AC power is lost. If you're starting the refrigerator for the first time, or if it's been in storage for more than a couple of months, it could have air in the lines and may need to be cycled several times before the LP reaches the refrigerator to ignite. To cycle the refrigerator igniter, Turn the refrigerator on, wait for about a minute for the automatic igniter to light. If it fails to ignite, turn it off, then back on again. Repeat this cycle until the refrigerator burner ignites. The gas light on the refrigerator panel will light up when it ignites. The front TV can only be viewed while the ignition is off. The TV operates from 120 volt AC power only, which can be provided by shore power, the generator, or the inverter. Viewing time of the front TV from the inverter depends on the state of charge of the house batteries and any additional 12 volt DC lighting systems being used. The coach is also equipped with a television antenna with built in electronics which uses 12 volt DC to boost signal strength. To use this feature, turn on the 12 volt coach power switch located at the entry door. Weak or fuzzy signals can also be improved by turning on the boost switch in the passenger side front overhead compartment. The booster and the antenna work together to provide the best possible picture in most situations. However, there are times when boosting the signal can make reception worse and lowering the antenna may actually help. To raise the antenna, press the raise button. The green light is on when the antenna is in motion. The red light is on when the antenna is raised. To turn the antenna, press the turn button to rotate the antenna for improved reception. Press the return button to move the antenna in the opposite direction. To alternate between cable TV and the coach antenna, press the antenna boost button. To lower the antenna, press the travel button. The antenna will automatically go to the store position. To use the plasma TV, you'll need to have the coach power switch turned on and have a source of 120 volt power. The sound for the VCR, cable, antenna, and satellite is routed through the VCR, so it must be on. If you're using the inverter for AC power, be aware that the plasma TV consumes a large amount of power and will drain the batteries fairly quickly. If you use caution and turn off all other unnecessary electrical lights and appliances, you should have enough power to watch a movie or two. Just keep an eye on the 12 volt power supply. Turn the TV on. Press the menu button. Input select will appear at the top of the main menu. Press the plus button. Use the down arrow and select video composite. This will allow you to view the TV on the cable, coach antenna, VCR, and the satellite. When you're using the video remote to make channel selections, be sure to press enter after selecting the channel number. On the Bose remote, touch the screen to activate it. Touch room. Each time you touch it, it will move the cursor from A, the inside speakers, to C, the bay speakers, or both. Make your selection, then press Source, then select Video 1, and adjust the volume. For the DBS 4500 satellite TV, the TV must be set to Video Composite. Turn on the dish. Use the RCA remote and press the Direct TV button. This will turn on the receiver. After a few moments, the dish will lock on and you can make your channel selections on the remote. Video 1 on the Bose remote will give you your sound source. Again, make sure the VCR is turned on. For the DBS 3000 satellite TV, again, set the TV to Video Composite. 
turn the power on, set the proper elevation, and set the mode button to view. If you don't set the proper elevation for the area you're in, the dish will still find the satellite, but it'll take a bit longer. To use the DVD, use the TV remote and press the menu button. Enter input select and use the down arrow. Go to input 1 YUV. Press the plus button to select. Turn on the DVD player. On the Bose remote, select source, then video 2. Your coach is equipped with two surround sound systems, one in the living room and one in the bedroom. The roof antenna and booster in the front of the coach also work for the rear TV. Turn the TV on and set it to channel 4. Turn on the VCR. The VCR will be the tuner used for channel selections. To play a videotape, simply insert the tape and press play. To use the DVD, use the input select button on the remote or on the TV and go to video 1. To use the satellite, use the input select button and go to video 2. Use AUX or AUX on the Bose remote for the volume control. The Girard awning is very simple to operate. It uses 120 volt AC power, so you'll need a power source available like the inverter, the generator, or shore power. It also features this remote control for the ultimate ease of use. To extend the awning, push the awning button and it will extend all the way out. If you want to stop it for any reason before it reaches full extension, push the button again. It's important not to leave the awning partially extended in the rain. It should be all the way out or all the way in, as the support arms are designed to offer the most support when extended all the way. To retract the awning, push the button again. It will move all the way to the stow position. Again, if you want to stop it, simply push the button one more time. This awning has a wind sensor that will automatically retract the awning when it senses a wind speed that could cause damage. Now that you're the proud owner of a new Beaver Motor Coach, we'd like to make it possible for you to expand your lifestyle to include participation in our clubs and rallies. Once we receive the limited warranty registration card from your dealer, you'll be mailed a new owner packet that will include an application for a free one-year membership in the Family Motor Coach Association and the Beaver Ambassador Club and a copy of Beaver Tales. Be sure to mail that application soon. Also included in the new owner packet will be your first issue of our Beaver Journal magazine. As a member, you will receive this incredible magazine every other month free for a year. This publication will keep you up to date on rallies and events. Our clubs have many wonderful members who love to get together at rallies where they enjoy each other's company as well as many fun activities. If you do not receive your new owner's packet within three weeks after delivery, please call Frank Ballantyne Beaver Ambassador Club at 800-634-0855 extension 3625 or email fballantine at monacohr.com and welcome to the Beaver family. We've just covered some of the most asked about features on your new Beaver. If you still have further questions about how your coach operates, refer to your owner's manual or consult your dealer. And thank you very much from Beaver Motor Coach.